Eve. Joining us now, Paul Hollis, Commissioner of the Mississippi Levy Board. Paul, thanks for joining Middays. Thank you, Gerard. It's uh, wonderful to be here. I will tell you that I am only one of seven commissioners, so I'm not the commissioner, and I may not be quite as entertaining as Hank Burdine, but I'll do the best <laughs> I can. Well, it is my understanding that uh, you're from Rolling Fork, right? Sharkey County, is that correct? I am. I am. I'm from Rolling Fork. I've uh, lived here since 1979. Okay. I'm, I'm not originally from here, but uh, uh, I love the Delta. I love where I live. Yeah. So I expect on that basis, and you being on the levy board, a commissioner on the levy board, one of, you said seven, right? That's correct. That's correct. You got to know a lot about the river in those parts, is what I'm thinking. And that's why we <laughs> wanted to have, why we wanted to have you on well, today. The, Go ahead. The river is such a vital part of what everything we do down here. We're, we're primarily agriculture. When you leave Leland and head south, we, uh, there's no other industry down here but agriculture. And we're affected by that in so many ways, whether it's high water, low water, flood water. It, it affects us every, every year in some way. Yeah. Well, that's what we want to talk to you about. So I think most of our audience has seen uh, some of the images of, of the river. They, they're seeing the the, um, the shores of the river, the edges of the river have contracted more towards the middle. They're seeing boats sitting up in sandbars and, and mud and so forth. We're seeing reports about concerns about the shipping lanes and, and being able to move uh, products, goods, up and down the river. It's a pretty critical waterway. Uh, for the transport of goods uh, up up and down uh, that part of the co- or this part of the country for sure, and then on beyond that, w- what's the truth about all this? How concerned should we be? Well, the truth is is that not only agricultural products move up and down that river, but everything that affects everyone in this country every day. Uh, you know, fuel moves up and down that river coal that powers uh, these energy plants for your electricity. Uh, they're, they're a lot more than just agricultural products. And when you cross that Mississippi River in Vicksburg and you see a barge, you think, boy, that's pretty cool. But what you don't realize, there are hundreds of barges every day navigating up and down that river to supply things to, to this entire country. Yeah. Uh, and it, and it is a real problem. This morning, the gauge in uh, Greenville was 5.8. Now, understand that doesn't mean the river is 5.8 feet deep. That's a, that's a figure that the Corps uses to measure the river. Gotcha. That is almost a foot lower than the record that was set in 1964. Okay. So right now, Gerard, what, what's happening is these barges are having to navigate north during the day and then the ones coming south during the night because they basically the river's not wide enough to pass each other in a safe manner. I see. And when you, so it's kind when of a, you do that, you know. I was just going to say, it's kind of sound like a, a one-way street, so to speak. Well, it is, and when that when those barges have to sit up overnight so that they can move the next day, that costs, and that costs yeah. the end user, and that end user is you and I. Yeah, that, that makes total sense. So you said uh, that this is – is this a record as far as the, the height of the water, the elevation of the water? You said 64 was the last time it was at this level, but we've exceeded that that level, right? Well, since, yeah, since they've been keeping records, uh, 6.7 was a record low in Greenville in 1964. Okay. And that, they've been keeping those levels, I guess, somewhere since the uh, 3040s. Okay. Well, is this uh, attributed, uh, Paul, to the obvious, which is just the, the lack of rain? Oh, yeah, it's a it's a major lack of rain. And I think Hank alluded to this the other day when you were talking to him, that most of the water in the Mississippi River comes through that Ohio base. Okay. Uh, Mississippi, where it joins uh, the Ohio, is relatively small. 
And most of that water has to come from that basin. And until they get rains in that OI basin, we won't see an increase in the river. And there really is no projection right now for a lot of rain up there. Huh. Okay, so uh, the level of the river, uh, I think I understand this correctly, is, is more a function of the rain upstream, so to speak, in this basin, which empties into the river, maybe more so than it is in, in directly in the river around our area. Uh, the, the river portion oh, that's yeah, adjacent right. to the state. The, the, oh, yeah. We, we don't uh, – what, what falls in our area really doesn't affect the level of the river. It has to come from north of us that fills okay. in the river and, and, and raises the levels of that. So the rain that we get here doesn't really affect the Mississippi River until you get south of us. And if we have torrential rains through the Mississippi Delta and it – or the Arkansas-Louisiana Delta, that rain does deposit into the river and can create, you know, higher levels past okay. us. But what we're dependent on is water north of us. Gotcha. So what action, if any, Paul, does the levee board take in this situation? Well, the only thing we can do, we're, we work hand-in-hand hand with the Corps engineers and see, you know, whatever we can do. Really, with a low river, there's not a whole lot we can do. The yeah. Corps of Engineers owns two dredges, and they are working right now to try to free areas up in the river where, uh, where these barges can pass. So right now, these barges are being loaded at about 70% of what their normal capacity is. And uh, so they're only drawing about nine feet of draft, where normally okay. they draw about 12.6 feet of draft. Okay. And that's, so with I that gotta, comes in, yeah. Expensive, right? I mean, it costs more. You got oh, the yeah, same yeah, fixed yeah. cost yeah, costs for the most more. part. Yeah. You wow. Do. And, uh, 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 and all these elevators have to pay that freight on those barges. And when they're, when they're short loading like that, it just means uh, per bushel. That that cost is is more expensive, and in the end, it's passed on to the consumer. Yeah, are are there any shippers of of any commodities or products that it, that have just a suspended shipping on the river because it's just not working out for them, or it's too expensive, or for any other factor involved? No, I don't think that that would be the case because, you know, that is such a uh, economical way to ship because they can ship in such mass uh, volume. But the problem right now is, you know, like Lake Ferguson in Greenville is full of barges that can't be moved out. A lot of those were loaded to full capacity when they had water. Now they're, okay. they're sitting on the bottom. Wow. Is there anything that could be done? Uh, is there dredging or any other action that could be taken by the Corps to free those up so they can well, float? Yeah. Well, yeah. Oh, out of the out of Lake Ferguson, probably not, yeah. because those were loaded a month and a half ago, and and they're just they no, I, they can't dredge underneath the bars. I wouldn't think. Wow is is any of that subject to spoilage if it just sits there for too long? Well, the elevators are real careful into what moisture they put grain into a, into a barge so that they don't have that happen. But, yeah, I'm sure there is a risk there the longer that it sits. Wow. Are, are they working together in any way, Paul? I mean, is, is it the alarm is sounded now and they're all trying to coalesce to figure out what can be done, or they're just limited? Are you talking about the elevators? The, or all the folks that are using the river for shipping their goods, their commodities? Oh, yeah. Well, well, they're doing that. And, and like I said before, what they've done is, you know, stopped it to that one-way traffic to try to keep some some commerce moving up and down that river. Man. But you said the forecast doesn't really show any significant rain in the Ohio Basin, which is the primary source that pours into the river. Exactly. No, there isn't any uh, forecast right now. And I was reading a core report the other day that said, you know, we're probably experiencing this through uh, first of November sometime. Wow, or that's August. amazing. Yeah, yeah. It's what's so strange is back in August that seemed like the wettest August around certainly central Mississippi that I can remember <laughs> quite some time now. And we just we went to the yeah. other extreme in a hurry. Well, we did, and we had a lot of effects on our crops because of all that rain in August. We had a lot of 
damage beams and things like that. So it's just part of agriculture. I get it. We I ran into Mike McCormick um, here in the hall when that was all going on, and man, they were sweating at Mike McCormick, of course, the CEO of uh, Mississippi Farm oh, Bureau. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. Paul, appreciate you joining us and uh, giving us an update man, on yeah. that. And let's pray for rain. Thank you, sir. Let's do. It. Thank you. Appreciate it, Paul Hollis, one of the commissioners with the Mississippi Levy Board. Stay with us. We're coming right back here on midday. <laughs> 